At age 16, he could not handle special education classes with children half his age. Then he was tested and they found out he was three points above moron. Today, he has seven doctorate degrees. Next, on this edition of It's Supernatural. Centuries have come and gone, offering wisdom and understanding throughout the ages. Today, there should be nothing beyond one's power to discover. And yet the strange, unusual, and mysterious world of the supernatural defies understanding. Stay tuned for a unique and powerful investigation into a curious, undiscovered universe only on It's Supernatural. Hello, I'm Sid Roth, your investigative reporter. I've been so looking forward to this interview because it's so verified and so impossible, it's absolutely outrageous that someone could be three points above moron, no hope of reversal, and end up with seven doctorates. Well, it starts way before Ricky. Yes. It started with the fact that you were told you should not have any children. In fact, the members of your family were told this uh, because it would uh, affect your health. Uh, the doctor said uh, that I could die. Told my husband, never let me have a child, that it could literally kill me. But one day, and, and this was highly unusual, you heard a voice and you believed it was God. And what did this voice say? Uh, I was praying and he told me to pray for a boy. This was a little bit shocking. How'd your husband react? <laughs> he said, oh, no, Why? no. Uh, I think it shocked him, too. He, I think he was a little bit doubting if I'd heard God's voice. And I said, yes, we will have a baby, and it'll be a boy. But yes, you had a baby. Yes, you had a boy. But you got a lot more than you bargained for. What was wrong with Ricky? When Ricky was born, the doctors told my husband we would never raise him because he came so sickly. My husband re re replied was, yes, we'll raise him. God gave him to us and we'll raise him. For the first six years, he slept in the bed with us. Why? For one minute, he'd be okay. It looked like the next minute we'd be on the way to the emergency room with him. He, would all, he was having like, uh, pneumonia, bronchitis, tonsillitis. He was even paralyzed for three months one time. Had a double set of teeth. Uh, the night he was to graduate from kindergarten, I think we touched the throne room that night. We touched God because he had his last convulsion, which was a double convulsion, and we thought we had lost him. Now, <laughs> But, but after that, it just stopped? Well, after that, the, the sick part stopped. Him being sick constantly mm -hmm. began to stop. But it was so bad that I actually went to his doctor and got on my knees crying and asked him, was I a bad mother? Why did he stay sick all the time? Okay, so the sickness is pretty much cleared up, but what did the doctor say about his mental condition? The doctors gave me no hope, said that he had severe brain damage and dyslexia. How did they know this? We carried him to the world's leading doctor in this field, and he kept him three days and night and analyzed him and tested him. But, Ricky, at age 14, you got so much hope. Yes, a, an did. evangelist who had never seen you That's before, right. tell me what happened. He read my clock. He read every aspect of my life. He described the beginning of my life all the way to the age of 14. He said that I was mentally retarded. He said I had no hope except Jesus was my hope. And he said that the, the Lord God was going to heal me. And the Lord God was going to educate me and would allow me to go to college. But the Lord said that he, or the prophet said that the Lord himself said that God himself would teach me his word. And every bit of that has been fulfilled. What happened next with that experience? Two days later, two days later, the power, the prophet said that the power of God would overshadow me. 
that the Lord himself would come down and speak to me person to person or face to face as a friend, audibly. When he said that, I went back to my room, I closed the door, and I waited. The demonic was fighting fiercely. I was crying, please speak to me. And you must understand, I was still retarded at that point. I could not, not just retarded, Doc, yes, three fear. points above I, more. Correct. That's right. What, what does that mean exactly? It's actually, it's like 75 is the moron stage. So it'd be like a 78. 78. Hmm. Okay, so you're pleading with God to yes. hear from him. Yes, and I was just crying, tears were just running down my, my face, and all of a sudden, the presence of God came into my room and became stronger. How did stronger. you know it? His children know. The children of God know his voice. The children of God know what is of him. I knew instinctively. There was no ifs, ands, or buts about it. I knew that was God. He literally spoke to me for 24 straight hours audibly. He told me and confirmed that he was going to heal me. He said, I, was, I am, saith the Lord, going to heal you for a new refreshing, a revival, a final awakening. Now, Dot, you weren't there, but your husband was there. What did he say happened to your son? I was at work. When I come in that morning, he was crying. My husband was crying. And he said, I wish you could have been here. The father has spoken to Ricky for 24 hours. He's been sealed away in the room. Did he see anything, your husband? Not that, at that moment, he didn't, no. Okay, but what, what did you see? Did you see the smoke of glass? Yes, I did. The presence of God was so strong and so powerfully that it visibly appeared as smoke. It was so strong that literally you could cut it. It was so thick and strong you could literally cut it with a knife. Then when you were 16, yes. another prophet spoke yes. an important word and yes, what happened? Did. What did he say? He said that the Lord God had heard my cry and that the Lord God at this point would heal me and fill in seven grades if my mom stood on that word and believed on that word. But you actually had to do something more than stand on it. You, yes. had, you had to do something, Dot. What was that? Yes. I had to almost enforce this. when. You had, to, you had to go to the school? Yes, when they called me from the school, they wanted me to take my son out of school, out of the special ed class. Why? They couldn't do any more, any more for him. They couldn't do anything. It was over. Wait a second. He's just had a prophecy that he's going to be okay, and the school says he can't handle it with eight-year-olds and under. He can't do that type of work. What is Dot going to do? Don't go away. We'll be right back. Hello, YouTube Mishpocha. Mishpocha is a Hebrew word. It means family. This is Sid Roth. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. If you've been blessed by this show, please subscribe. Then click the bell so you won't miss a single episode of It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth, your investigative reporter, here with Ricky and his mother, Dot Roberts. And Ricky was born a very sickly child. He was measured three points above moron. But the worst thing of all is here he's 16 years of age, weighs, what, 300 pounds? Over, over. over, over weighs over 300 right. pounds. You're in classroom with children eight years old and under, and Dot, you call and find out that they don't want him anymore. Why didn't they want him anymore? Uh, they couldn't do anything to help him anymore. It was over. They had done all they could do, and they said they were just using him as a babysitter. And what did you say? I told them the Lord had healed my son, put him into 10th grade. 
<laughs> they just said he can't handle kindergarten. <laughs> the Lord give me the gift of faith. I believe at that moment it was really just come upon me. And I got in the car and I went to the school. I ran in that school hollering, God's healed my son, put him into 10th grade. They had seen me cry over my boy. They thought at this moment I had completely flipped out. They just knew they had a mental case on hand. A fruit case. <laughs> a fruit cake. So did you give up? Oh, no. Never give up. You don't look like the kind of person that's going to give up. <laughs> no, never give up, Sid. Uh, they sent me to the principal. And, of course, he was really upset. And he told me that they'd done all they could do, that if I chose to put Ricky in the 10th grade, I would destroy him. But I looked up, and, and they had a, a word on the wall of Scripture. said that, you know, with God all things are possible. So I told him, if he didn't believe God had healed my son, take it down as a hypocrite. So then he sent my son to their doctor. And so I went into the doctor's office, and the doctor said, I don't believe in that junk. I said, I'm a believer, and God's work can be tested, tested. And a couple of weeks or so, we carried his special ed teacher back with us. And what was the report? The doctor said, I don't know what to say to you guys. Would you believe it if I told you that he was doing trigonometry he had never had, algebra he never had, 10th grade work he never had? Ricky, how could you answer questions on this test on algebra and trigonometry if you've never been taught? You can't. I can't. It was amazing, Sid. These answers were coming into my mind. They were just flowing into my mind from God. These answers would pop into my mind. It's amazing. So what did the doctor say? Well, he said, I just don't know what to say to you. He said, I don't I have no idea what to say to you. What would the principal put, say? Put this boy in the 10th grade. Well, uh, when we, the, the special ed teacher was with us, so she went back and gave them the report. Had they ever had someone move no. from special ed to 10th grade? No. Said it was impossible. That was impossible. But when they uh, went back and they had a meeting and no one wanted a retarded boy in their class. Not at that age anyway. But one teacher decided to take him. On trial. Yes, oh. but, but what, what, what? he's not retarded. The tests show he's not. He knows trigonometry. But they didn't understand it like that. Okay, they found one teacher. Why did this teacher do it? He had had a child who had a problem, and he felt like Ricky needed to be in with his own age group. So describe to me what happened your first day in 10th grade, Ricky. Well, Sid, it was, my whole life was changed instantaneous. It was like, for many, many years, my whole mind had been dark, and then God just lit a small match in my mind, and it exploded and these thoughts were coming into my mind, answers were coming in. Uh, of course, my whole life had changed at that time. I walked into this room shaking, scared to death. The children knew that I had been retarded. They still thought I was retarded. Were the children pretty cruel to you yes, previously? They did yes, they call you names? Yes, they, they make did. fun of you? Yes, they did. Uh, and what's so amazing about this, God said He would never take that away from me. And I asked him why, because God said, you must remember where I brought you from. So tell me, what was it like being mocked by the other children? It's a death by itself. It's, it's a form of death that uh, I would not wish upon my worst on enemies. You're crying right now. There are yes, tears I am. in your yes, eyes. Yes, I am. Because 20, 10 years ago, I could not have told this story because the power of God such comes on me that I just start crying because I remember where I was. So tell me about that first day in 10th grade. I was scared. Doctor, uh, Mr. Hazlett sent me at the first uh, desk. He, uh, he, said, he just started writing all the things that we were gonna have the test on, uh, on history, it was world history. Uh, I just took out my notes and wrote everything that was needed and I began to study. 
uh, the first uh, test, I made 100. Did that raise the eyebrows of the other it children? It really did. It really did. And within six weeks, the children that had, that had giggled at me, I was tutoring them. The children that were mocking him, that were laughing at him, the doctors said it wasn't possible. The teachers didn't even want to take someone three points above moron, even though he tested. They didn't believe it. They couldn't believe the test. He gets a hundred. You know what? All things are possible to those who believe the truth. You're going to find out something so spectacular that no matter where you are right now, you will have the same faith that his mother had for your miracle. Don't go away. Hello, Sid Roth, your investigative reporter. I mean, that is such an amazing miracle. Ricky, three points above moron, and now he's teaching the other students in the 10th grade. This is impossible. But God says all things are possible. All things. That's pretty inclusive. All things are possible to those who believe. Now, let's fast forward a little bit. Graduation night. You're obviously in the audience. How are you feeling, graduation? Excited. Because Satan has said all those years that I would never graduate. See, the lie was that I would never be able to make a living from my mind, only from my hands. And God has reversed this. And God has said that I, you know, I've always said since God healed me that it's God's ability, not mine. I give God everything. So, uh, Doc, I've got to ask you, you're sitting there at graduation. You you're the proud it. mama. What's going on inside of Dot? Oh, Sid, I can't even explain it. When that night that he was to gra did graduate, he came down that aisle with such honor cords around him. And when he went up on the platform to receive his first award, I believe that was business law. Right. And the, the, the principal said, you just well to stand here. You'll walk yourself to death going back and forth. Said that night he got every award but two. Did uh, the other students acknowledge what a miracle this was? Oh, yes. How? Yes. I think they were... They were totally surprised it, that night that when we had prayed that the story would come out in graduation, and they said he jumped seven grades. That's why he got the most outstanding award. And the students cried, and the people in the audits cried. Tears was just flowing everywhere. But today, today, Ricky, you have seven doctorates. Yes. He has two PhDs. Yes. Uh, awards. Uh, you, you, you just got. To, uh, I just found out. We don't even have the certificate yet. Uh, you got a uh, Cambridge University award for one of the top 1,000 yes. Americans. Yes. Uh, what other awards have you won? Uh, International Youth Achievement. Uh, that was in high school. Only 10,000 worldwide received that. I re received that twice. Nobody's ever done that before. I've received um, uh, who's who in, in high school, who's who in America. And this year, I received who's who in the world. And now next year, I will receive who's who in the world. How'd you do that? It's How the, did you? It's the grace of God. It's the grace of God. I did nothing. God gave me the ability and the capacity, and then he said, go learn. What would you say to a mother that's watching right now, Dot? What would you say to a mother who's got a child that is uh, physically handicapped, mentally handicapped, or emotionally handicapped? Talk to her right now. I would tell her to get in the Bible. I would tell her to read the Word of God to that child. I would also tell her to not give up hope because 
my God and your God has no special, uh, special person, people. What he did for my son, he'll do for you. Hang on. What, what do you think when you see your son speaking and when you see miracles happen when he speaks? How do you feel? You know where he came from. You know, it, listen, you told me that you actually set an alarm clock every 30 minutes when he was a baby because you were afraid he might die and you'd be sleeping. That's correct. We set an alarm clock to watch him. Uh, most of the time, wherever Ricky was, his daddy or I were somewhere close by. But to see him now, knowing what state he's come from, words cannot explain it. It's miraculous. When I see him teaching, when I see him praying for people, and I see God move, and I look at him, sometimes I sit there, tears go to my eyes. Only the grace of God. Now, he's been prophesying over people. Do you see them come to pass, yes. the prophecies? Yes. Okay. Next week, Ricky is going to be on It's Supernatural. And he's going to speak in the power of God, the same power that caused him to go from three points above moron, where his medical doctor said, no hope, he can't even cut it with eight-year-olds, to having seven doctorate degrees. Those of you that have impossible situations in your life, I urge you to tune in next week. I urge you to do exactly what his mother Dot said to do, and that is to start reading the Bible. All things are possible to those who believe. All things. It's very inclusive. All things are possible to those who believe. What? You can believe anything. No, no, no. Believe that God sent his only son who came to this earth to die for you, rose from the dead, by his stripes, his blood, your sins were washed away. Tell God you're sorry for the sins that you have committed. Believe the blood of Jesus has washed the sins away. And now make Jesus Messiah and Lord. You do this with your mouth. Do that right now. Have a fresh start and recognize you are as valuable as Ricky is. You are as precious to God as Ricky is. You have a destiny in your life just like Ricky does. You have a purpose. There is something great that is going to happen to you. And next week is going to be the beginning. I'll see you again on It's Supernatural.